Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here and man do ever have a lot to talk about in today's video about company earnings. If you aren't aware of this, well, this past week has been earnings week for many publicly traded companies, including a handful that I hold in my portfolio. So yeah, in today's video, we'll be covering three tech stocks that recently just reported their earnings being Amazon, Shopify, and Facebook. We have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's just jump right into the first company, which is going to be Facebook. All right, now Facebook is a company that's often in media crossfire. They get lots of backlash regarding consumer privacy, but the reality is that Facebook remains one of the largest and strongest digital advertising companies in the entire world, and their Q1 2021 figures are a testament to this. I first spoke about Facebook back at around $270 per share, and so since then, the stock has appreciated quite nicely. Definitely a nice gain in the shorter term, but this is a company that should continue to thrive moving forward, even with some of the upcoming roadblocks that it's about to face with Apple, which we'll be speaking about shortly. But Thursday morning, Facebook stock did open up roughly 8%. It did sell off a bit, but still this rapid upwards movement brought Facebook to now over $900 billion in market cap, which is really impressive. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see Facebook break the 1 trillion mark before the end of 2021 based on their rapid financial growth. But what's even more impressive are the financial figures that they just reported. Take a look at this, over 26 billion in top line revenues for Q1 2021, making this their best ever first quarter by a long shot. And are we really surprised by this? I'm personally not. Over the past year, e-commerce has gained so much more traction as a result of the pandemic and consumers switching to online shopping. And Facebook is one of the main digital advertising platforms. So with more and more companies having a larger advertising spend for social media, well, it's completely natural that Facebook would have an increase in advertising revenues. Year over year though, this past quarter's top line grew by 46%. That is just staggering. And from a profitability standpoint, net income was 9.5 billion, up 94% since the same quarter last year, also beating analyst estimates by a hefty 39.2%. Honestly, as a Facebook shareholder, I am extremely happy with this quarter's figures, which were driven both by ad impressions served, which grew by 12%, and then also the average price per ad increased by 30% over same quarter last year. So this is the perfect duo of growth for Facebook, increased actual ad spend, and then also an increased amount of dollars generated per impression on their platform. Now, Facebook's expenses did also increase with this surge in top line, reaching $14.79 billion, but considering the fact that on a relative basis to their revenues, this represented only 56.5%, which is down from last year's 66.8%. That's a significant increase. All in all, financial growth was rock solid this quarter for Facebook, and this was reflected in the price movements that we saw from investors. Let's now quickly take a look at Facebook's forward-looking financial guidance for the rest of 2021. So first off, Facebook did mention that they do expect revenues to continue increasing over the course of 2021. Their forward-looking PE as a result is sitting at around 24. And for Q2 2021 though, they do expect revenues to be similar to Q1. With that said, historically speaking, ad revenue for Facebook always tends to accelerate in the second half of the year. And although I would have expected this to be no different for this year, Facebook is expecting growth to actually decline in Q3 and Q4 as a result of Apple's iOS 14.5 update, which is set to limit Facebook's ability to track that same level of user activity. Even considering this unfortunate situation though for Facebook's ad revenue moving forward, I do expect that considering the rapid growth that we are seeing for just the digital ad spend in general, we should still see Facebook's revenues exceeding 100 billion over the course of 2021, even though there will be a slowdown in Q3 and Q4. Finally, average analyst targets over the next 12 months for Facebook are at an average of $385 a share, which would show a nice 26% upside. Considering the level of growth that we've been seeing for Facebook over the past couple of quarters, and also considering their forward-looking guidance for the rest of the year, I think that this price target is fair. 
All right, moving on to the second update for a tech stock that I hold in my portfolio, we have a Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP, both on the Toronto Stock Exchange and on the NYSE. Now, Shopify has long been a stock that Wall Street just does not like. Consistently, we see uh, analyst price targets at around $200 per share for this stock. And realistically, that is just a price we are never going to see again with Shopify based on their level of growth. It's actually kind of ridiculous that uh, consistently over the past couple of years, this type of price target has been set out for Shopify. Especially with the pandemic over this past year and a half, well, this has just been a further catalyst for Shopify's continued growth over the coming years. So its American listed stock is trading for right around $1,200 as of right now when I'm filming this, and that's after a slight increase from positive recent earnings, which we'll be looking over shortly. But like with Amazon stock, Shopify has been trending sideways for the better part of a year now, actually, after the large run-up that we saw last summer. So since July, 2020, the stock basically hasn't moved. It's only up around 5% had you held, but it did reach a 52 week high of $1,500. And like I just mentioned, Shopify is one of these companies that is benefiting firsthand from the pandemic, just like Amazon. But while it isn't an actual marketplace to sell goods like, say, Amazon or Etsy, this is an e-commerce provider where shops can create their own online store. So Shopify mainly generates their income through two sources. The first one being a recurring subscription for just using their platform and hosting your shop on Shopify. And the second one being a cut on every transaction that is processed process through Shopify payments, which is their native payment gateway. And just to give you some further context here, some of the largest brands that utilize Shopify include Kylie Cosmetics, KKW, Yeezy, Fashion Nova, and dozens more. Let's now dig into their Q1 2020 financials. Truly, this was a fantastic quarter for Shopify. Total revenues for the quarter were 988.6 million, which was up 110% year over year. Again, not that surprising, but still very impressive. Of that, their subscription revenue was 320 million, which grew by 71%, resulting from an increase in new merchants joining the platform. Basically, more people are opening up online shops because that's where the future of retail ultimately lies. But the largest growth factor was with their merchants solutions, up 137% year over year, attributed to the significant increase in gross transactions flowing through Shopify's payment gateway. In fact, this amounted to $37.3 billion, which was an increase of almost $20 billion in this one quarter. That is truly impressive. Now, Shopify's relative gross profit, though, it also increased to 56.5%, up from 54.6% last year, with the operating income being positive for the quarter. Moving down here, we can see that their net income figure was 1.3 billion, and this is also quite striking. But although factual, we do need to keep in mind that this was as a result of an unrealized gain on Shopify's equity in the company Affirm, which went public in July 2021. So this was a one-time net income boost and won't necessarily be replicated on a consistent basis. In fact, it won't. All in all though, this past quarter was unbelievable for Shopify on a relative growth basis. I tend to believe that the only real reason why we didn't see more investor excitement is because the stock already is quite pricey. But as the company does continue to grow this rapidly and increase their net income more organically, this will help the company attract more positivity. With that said, the company does still maintain a positive outlook for the rest of 2021. This next part was quoted from their earnings statement where it says, while we expect that the first quarter will likely still contribute the smallest share of full year revenue and the fourth quarter the largest, the revenue spread may be more evenly distributed across the four quarters than it has been historically if the rollout of a vaccine shifts more consumer spending to services and offline shopping towards the back half of the year. We do continue to expect rapid growth in gross profit dollars in 2021 and plan to reinvest back into our business as aggressively as we can. This is very typical typical of Shopify to aggressively reinvest all of their earnings back into growth. It's a true growth company. And the fact that Q1 2021 revenues were flush with Q4 2020 is impressive. 
Considering this growth though, I would probably expect to see Shopify posting revenues of probably around 5 billion in 2021. And over the past year, Shopify has maintained a quite pricey valuation at a price to sales ratio of roughly 50. So considering a $5 billion revenue figure for 2021, this would place the company at around $250 billion in valuation with this same price to sales ratio. But even on a more conservative basis, the company should be able to see $200 billion in valuation by the end of the year. That's what I am expecting at least. And this exact growth pattern in revenues is clearly demonstrated on this growth chart on Simply Wall Street, where we can see this one-off in net income, but then over time, the company is still focusing on profitability while reinvesting as much as possible into growth of their top line. And then finally, Shopify's balance sheet is just out of this world with 8.48 billion in current assets and only 595 million in current liabilities. Even their total ratio is roughly 7x and this has been true for Shopify over the past few years. And finally, the third and last tech stock that we're gonna be speaking about and giving you an update on in today's video is Amazon. Yes, I know I recently made an update on this company, but with their earnings having just been released, I could not leave it out in today's video. Amazon is just an absolute animal. I mean, the positive Q1 2021 release triggered a very nice price movement after hours of around 3% on Thursday evening. And now, even though there has been a sell-off over the course of the trading period, this past earnings release is indicative of the growth that I was speaking about in my last video on Amazon. Amazon easily beat analyst estimates with revenues of 108.518 billion for the quarter, up a staggering 43.82% year over year. And let's remember that this is Q1 only. Over the trailing 12 months though, their operating cash flow rose by 69% up to a total of 67.2 billion. The company is also a cash generating machine with free cash flows of 26.4 billion over the past 12 months, which is up 2.1 billion from last year. Again, just like with Shopify here, both of these firms are highly benefiting from the shift to online where yes, we were seeing an organic shift to online shopping year over year over the past decade, but the pandemic truly was a further catalyst propelling these companies' revenues and users over the past year, which is going to have a significant impact on their longevity. Even just take this as a quick example here. So I live in Canada and in certain provinces, including mine, which is Quebec, the federal government or provincial, I should say, um, has deemed certain goods non-essential in certain businesses. And I'm not talking just things that truly are not essential. I'm talking like 80% of what you can buy in say a Canadian tire or a Walmart that is outside of food is deemed non-essential. You literally cannot buy it. You have to do curbside pickup, which is just a huge hassle and their logic behind this is to make an equal playing field for other smaller businesses that are operating in that space that might be uh, shut down temporarily. But ultimately, all this is doing is frustrating customers and having them shift towards online shopping. And this is only helping a large multinational company like Amazon. More than just e-commerce though, what Amazon really has going for them though is their web of diversity in multiple different key industries. They're basically the largest e-com platform. They also own Twitch for streaming. Amazon Web Services is also one of the largest and most competitive cloud providers in the world. They also own Whole Foods and a whole bunch of other companies in multiple industries. They're even venturing into telemedicine, which is also going to allow Amazon to capture a part of that market, which is growing extremely rapidly considering the lack of medical professionals and increase in population. And at this point, Amazon's growth worldwide can hardly be stopped at this point. In India, which is one of the quickest growing economies in the world, Amazon is planning to add over 1 million new jobs there by 2025. Just think of how impactful full penetration into the Indian market will be for Amazon's revenue growth over the next decade. Regarding Prime memberships, there are now over 200 million paid Prime members I mean, with the level of service that Amazon delivers, this isn't all that surprising. We honestly don't even have a need really to go to the store anymore if we don't want to and then wait in line and wash our hands about 20 times going from store to store. 
Reading through their earnings release though, I was just taken aback at how many projects and ventures Amazon is taking on at once. It's truly mind blowing and really shows firsthand how impactful Amazon is as a company, but more importantly, how it'll be basically impossible to avoid this company in one way or another over the next five to 10 years. Let's now quickly go over some guidance figures for the rest of 2021 from Amazon, starting with their net sales, which aren't supposed to slow down one bit. In fact, they're expected to be between 110 and 116 billion, showing growth exceeding 25% year over year, which would make this their best ever Q2. And as with all years, the second half of the year is always the best for Amazon. So realistically, Amazon should be posting revenues exceeding 400 50 billion this year, maybe even 500 billion. Realistically, there are few companies that even compare to Amazon regarding how bullish I am on them over the next five to 10 years and even beyond. This is going to be a multi trillion dollar industry or business, I should say. Uh, but you know what? Actually, Amazon basically is creating their own industry, the everything industry, I guess we could call it. But yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up for today's update on three tech stocks that I hold in my portfolio. Truthfully, all three of them just posted absolutely fantastic Q1 figures. Very impressive and I am happy as a shareholder for a long-term hold in these companies and hopefully you got into them uh, back when I spoke about them also. You'd be up probably around 15-20%. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. It really helps the channel out. Subscribe also to the channel and hit the bell button to be notified of new and upcoming investing content. I would also highly recommend that you check out the links down below where you can open up say a well simple trade account and you will get $25 for free when you sign up and fund the account with $100 initially. I'd also recommend that you check out my full stock market investing course with over 60 video lectures if you want to go from literally knowing very little about the stock market all the way up to having a full portfolio based on your needs as an investor. So with that said, thanks a lot for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.